In the quaint and peaceful setting of a small town church, a wedding ceremony was unfolding as planned until an unexpected turn of events brought everything to a halt. The officiating priest, who was not the regular parish priest but had stepped in for the occasion, noticed something peculiar about the bride that caught his attention. With a concerned expression, he discreetly gestured to the choir, signaling them to cease the music abruptly. This unforeseen interruption left the congregation in a state of shock and bewilderment, especially considering the stand-in priest was not Father Osborne, the revered parish priest of All Saints Church who had dedicated 17 years of his life to serving the community. Father Osborne, known for his wisdom, kindness, and unwavering dedication, was present to witness and bless the union of Elias and Gertrude, marking a poignant conclusion to his esteemed service. Elias, the groom, was a familiar and respected figure in the town. Having served as an altar boy under Father Osborne's guidance, he grew up to become the town's electrician, a trade he learned from his uncle. In a town where change was rare and everyone knew each other's business, Elias was recognized for his diligence, reliability, and affable nature. However, his personal life bore the scars of a tragic loss, the death of his ex-wife six years prior had left an emptiness in his heart, prompting a yearning for companionship once again. The arrival of Gertrude, the bride, in this closely knit community was a source of intrigue and speculation. The townsfolk, unaccustomed to newcomers, were particularly fascinated by her enigmatic presence. Gertrude was an individual shrouded in mystery, her reclusive behavior and reluctance to engage with others only deepened the mystery surrounding her. She seldom ventured outside her dwelling and when she did, she avoided any form of interaction or acknowledgement of the townspeople's greetings. This behavior led many to wonder about her origins and the circumstances that brought her to their secluded town. The story of Elias and Gertrude's wedding day is one that underscores the delicate fabric of a small community, where the arrival of a stranger can stir the calm waters and evoke curiosity and concern. It highlights the profound impact of the clergy in such close-knit settings, where figures like Father Osborne play pivotal roles in the lives of the townsfolk. As the narrative unfolds, the mysterious circumstances surrounding the bride at the altar prompt a dramatic intervention, leaving the congregation and the beloved priest in a state of suspense and anticipation for what is to come, there was something undeniably mysterious about her, where she originated from or the essence of her true identity remained an enigma that only deepened the intrigue surrounding her. Gertrude, as she was known, had a peculiar custom that further fascinated and confused the inhabitants of the town. On the rare occasions she ventured outside, she was never seen without a veil. This veil, crafted from a delicate, sheer material, obscured her face, offering mere glimpses of her features to those who tried to peer through. It served as a barrier, cloaking her in mystery and sparking curiosity and, in some cases, suspicion among the townsfolk. All they were treated to were fleeting views of the fabric dancing in the wind, despite their persistent efforts to catch a proper look at the woman beneath the veil. Gertrude thus remained a figure of enigma, her true appearance cloaked in secrecy, leaving the residents to only speculate about the face hidden beneath the veil, which did little to satisfy their growing curiosity. As time passed, this curiosity morphed into unease, giving rise to a plethora of rumors and conjectures regarding her background. Some murmured that she might be a fugitive, concealing her identity to evade capture, while others considered her preference for privacy a matter of modesty, possibly for personal or religious reasons. However, as Gertrude continued to elude the community, more outlandish theories began to emerge. A faction of the populace was convinced she was a spectral entity, haunting the streets of their tranquil town with her silent, veiled presence. Others proposed a darker theory, suggesting that Gertrude was under the influence of a malevolent force, which, in their minds, was the only plausible explanation for her peculiar behavior and appearance. As days turned into weeks, the whispers and speculation only grew, intensifying the town's fascination with the enigmatic Gertrude and the mystery she embodied. Everyone had their conjectures, yet the truth about this secretive woman who had captivated their imaginations remained out of reach. Therefore, the town was taken aback when news broke that Elias, the local electrician, had proposed to Gertrude. The revelation was astonishing, how had their relationship progressed to such a decisive point without anyone noticing? The townsfolk were left bewildered, trying to piece together how Elias and Gertrude's paths had crossed, leading to such an unexpected engagement. 
The announcement of their impending nuptials only served to stoke the flames of curiosity about Gertrude even further. Questions abounded regarding how Gertrude had managed to endear herself to Elias, and now, more than ever, the residents were determined to uncover the truth behind the woman who had stolen Elias's heart. As the wedding day approached, the once serene town found itself abuzz with speculation and eager anticipation. Even Father Osborne, who was not typically given to gossip, found himself drawn into the web of intrigue that surrounded Gertrude. Like the rest of the townsfolk, he too was keen to understand the mystery of the woman who had so unexpectedly become a central figure in their lives. T. He community awaited the wedding day with bated breath, hoping it would unveil the truth about the elusive Gertrude and perhaps, at last, lift the veil on the mystery that had so thoroughly captivated their imaginations. Intrigued by the rapid and rather unexpected engagement of Elias and Gertrude, and particularly by Gertrude herself, Father Osborne found his curiosity piqued despite his forthcoming departure from his cherished role as the priest of All Saints Church. Compelled by his interest in the couple, he resolved to postpone his farewell. He was keen not only to preside over Elias and Gertrude's nuptials but also to delve deeper into the mysteries surrounding the captivating woman who had seized the town's curiosity and Elias's affection. Father Osborne looked forward to playing a key role in their marriage ceremony, hoping to unravel the enigma that enveloped the pair. As the eagerly anticipated day of the wedding approached, the town was abuzz with excitement. Locals set aside their daily tasks to partake in the preparations, all the while speculating about the enigma that lay beneath the surface of the couple's story. This day promised not only a celebration of love but also the potential revelation of the intriguing secrets that had captivated the town. However, destiny had other plans. In a shocking twist, as the final touches were being applied to the wedding setup, Father Osborne suffered a mishap. A fall down a staircase left him injured and incapable of fulfilling his duties at the wedding. This unfortunate event cast a pall over what was to be a joyous celebration, plunging Elias and the townsfolk into turmoil. With Father Osborne incapacitated, a frantic search ensued for someone to fill his significant shoes. Elias considered postponing the wedding, but the community insisted the ceremony proceed without delay. In an urgent effort to salvage the day, a visiting priest, known as Father Marcus, was quickly called upon to officiate in Father Osborne's stead. Father Marcus was no ordinary clergyman, having arrived in the town just a week before the wedding, he was shrouded in mystery. Notable not only for his advanced years but also for his peculiar habits, Father Marcus was often found awake at night, deeply engrossed in ancient texts and chanting prayers in obscure languages. This behavior not only puzzled the locals but also raised eyebrows among the ecclesiastical circles, including Father Osborne. The sudden appearance and enigmatic nature of Father Marcus fueled widespread speculation among the townspeople. Rumors began to swirl, painting him as not merely a priest but an exorcist possessing a rare gift for detecting and combating malevolent forces. The notion that Father Marcus could discern the presence of dark entities only heightened the air of mystery and apprehension surrounding the wedding. As the replacement for Father Osborne, Father Marcus's involvement brought an added layer of intrigue to an already extraordinary event. His reputed abilities and mysterious demeanor intensified the townspeople's curiosity and unease, setting the stage for a wedding that would be remembered not just for the union it celebrated but for the extraordinary circumstances that enveloped it, the small town became increasingly intrigued by the enigmatic substitute priest, sparking curiosity among the locals about the extent of his influence and the revelations he might bring to light. However, Father Marcus appeared undisturbed by the growing fascination around him, his interest singularly captivated by the bride-to-be, Gertrude. From his first encounter with her, an inexplicable sense lingered with Father Marcus, a premonition that urged him to scrutinize her more closely. As the wedding approached, Father Marcus was plagued by unsettling dreams centered around Gertrude. These nocturnal visions left him with a sense of foreboding, suggesting they carried a significance beyond his comprehension. With the nuptials imminent, his apprehensions regarding Gertrude intensified, driving him to seek the truth beneath her enigmatic veneer. Despite delays, the day of the wedding arrived, with Elias and Gertrude poised at the altar, ready to pledge their commitment to each other. Elias, beaming with joy, faced Gertrude, who was traditionally veiled. Yet, 
Father Marcus, armed with his sharp perception and guided by his disconcerting intuition, noticed anomalies in Gertrude's appearance through the translucent fabric of her veil. This revelation compelled him to halt the ceremony abruptly, stunning Elias, the guests, and even Gertrude herself. With an authoritative tone, Father Marcus demanded Gertrude to remove her veil, leaving no room for objection. Elias, taken aback by the priest's sudden and inexplicable behavior, watched in confusion. Gertrude hesitated, her hands shaking as she reached to unveil herself, under the intense gaze of the gathered crowd, who were on tenterhooks, eagerly anticipating the revelation. As she slowly lifted her veil, a hush fell over the congregation, the suspense palpable in the air. What had been concealed behind the veil for so long was about to be disclosed, eliciting a wave of astonishment that swept through the crowd that I in a moment that seemed to stand still, the collective breath of the town's people was held in anticipation as the mysterious veil was finally lifted. For the first time, the residents of the quaint town were given the opportunity to gaze upon the face of the enigmatic woman, Gertrude, who had quietly taken up residence among them. The unveiling revealed a truth that was beyond anyone's wildest expectations. Undeniably, Gertrude was a woman of striking beauty, yet there was an astonishing feature that immediately captivated everyone's attention. With the removal of her veil, it became apparent that Gertrude lacked lips, in place of where her lips should have been, there was merely smooth skin that unexpectedly exposed her teeth in a striking manner. This peculiar sight transformed her into a figure that seemed as though she had stepped right out of a budget horror film, leaving the onlookers utterly dumbfounded. The sight was so bewildering that it silenced the crowd, their minds grappling with the shocking revelation laid bare before them. A collective gasp rippled through the crowd, inclusive of the astounded Father Marcus, marking a moment of collective astonishment at Gertrude's unique visage. However, amidst the sea of gasps and wide-eyed stares, there stood Elias, unfazed by the revelation, firmly by Gertrude's side. He had been privy to the secret of Gertrude's distinctive appearance from the beginning and it had not deterred his affection for her in the slightest. Elias's acceptance and love for Gertrude went beyond superficial appearances and societal judgments, illustrating a love that was profound and unconditioned. The origin of Elias and Gertrude's relationship traced back to when Gertrude first arrived in town and took up residence in a dilapidated building devoid of electricity. In need of an electrician, she enlisted Elias's services. As Elias worked to bring light back into her home, his curiosity about the veiled woman grew, yet professional integrity kept him focused on the task at hand. It was only after he accidentally packed Gertrude's special pen into his toolbox and discovered it the next day, that fate nudged him towards a deeper connection with Gertrude. Driven by a blend of curiosity and a conscientious desire to return the pen, Elias decided to make an unscheduled visit to Gertrude's home the following week, unaware that this decision would mark the beginning of a transformative journey for both. Upon his arrival, Elias found the door ajar and noticed smoke filling the house from within. Concerned for Gertrude's well-being, he rushed inside, only to find her dozing off in the sitting room without her veil, revealing her face to him for the first time in an intimate, unplanned moment. This encounter not only set the stage for their future together but also underscored the power of acceptance and the depth of genuine affection that transcends physical appearances. Upon noticing that her meal was starting to char, Elias swiftly intervened to deactivate the stove. As he moved closer to rouse her, Elias was granted an unobstructed view of Gertrude's visage. Where many might recoil in shock at her distinctive features, Elias was notably undisturbed. Unlike others before him, he did not find her appearance alarming. On the contrary, when Gertrude awoke to find Elias nearby, she let out a scream of fright. Acting on impulse, she clasped her hand over her marred mouth and retreated to her bedroom, securing herself inside. Despite Gertrude's initial panic and her seclusion, Elias's resolve to connect with her never wavered. He stood outside her locked door, calling out to her with heartfelt pleas, apologizing for startling her, and expressing a genuine wish to make amends. For an arduous six hours, Elias waited with unwavering patience, determined not to abandon his effort. When Gertrude finally stepped out, her appearance spoke volumes of the emotional distress she had undergone, her eyes were puffy from shedding tears, and her voice was raspy from the upheaval. Without a moment's hesitation, Elias enveloped her in a comforting embrace, providing the support and solace she desperately needed in her vulnerable state. 
As Gertrude wept, Elias offered words of reassurance, affirming her beauty and worth just as she was. This moment of empathy and acceptance was transformative for Gertrude, marking the dawn of a profound and unique connection between the two. Far from driving them apart, this episode brought them closer together. Elias, understanding the value of discretion, especially in a small town prone to gossip, chose to maintain their privacy. As time passed, the bond between Elias and Gertrude deepened, fortified by a remarkable coincidence, Gertrude shared both the name and the birth date of Elias's late mother. This serendipitous discovery further cemented their closeness, fostering a relationship built on mutual understanding, trust, and gradually blossoming love. When they felt prepared to advance their relationship, they decided to marry, envisioning a future together. Elias preferred an intimate ceremony, with only a priest as a witness, to quietly celebrate their union. However, Gertrude harbored a different vision. After years of concealing her true self, she grew weary of the shadows. She yearned for authenticity and to present herself to the world boldly, without fear or concealment. Rejecting the notion of continuing to mask her appearance, Gertrude conveyed to Elias her desire for a public wedding. She aspired to have a ceremony that would allow her to unveil her true self, devoid of any apprehension or embarrassment. This decision underscored her journey towards self-acceptance and her determination to live openly, embracing her identity with pride. The wedding was envisioned not only as a jubilant celebration of love but also as Gertrude's own personal journey towards liberation from her long-standing fears and an embracing of her true self. Elias, her soon-to-be husband, harbored reservations about holding such a public affair. Concerns about potential mishaps and the possibility of an unwelcoming reception from the public weighed heavily on him. He feared the emotional toll it could take on Gertrude. Nevertheless, he chose to stand by her decision, acknowledging the profound significance this step represented for her. He saw the value in her desire to emerge from the shadows of her past and bask in the light of self-acceptance. Gertrude had confided in Elias her intention to unveil herself after the church ceremony, symbolically shedding her past. However, a heartfelt gesture from an observant priest would see her moment of self-acceptance arrive sooner than anticipated. Standing before the assembled crowd, her face uncovered, Gertrude felt neither shame nor fear. She was determined not to let her past dictate her future. This pivotal moment was the culmination of a life marked by adversity. As a child, Gertrude experienced a tragic accident that left her severely scarred. She had accidentally ingested a corrosive chemical, which resulted in the loss of her lips. This incident not only altered her physical appearance but set her on a path of isolation and rejection. Even her family withdrew their support, unable to come to terms with her altered appearance. Bereft of a support network, Gertrude was left to fend for herself, leading a life characterized by loneliness as she moved from place to place seeking acceptance. Her fortunes changed upon arriving in a secluded town, where she found a community that embraced her for who she was. It was here that Gertrude discovered a sense of belonging and acceptance that had eluded her for so long. She built a new life, found love with Elias, and experienced a renewal of hope. Initially, Elias's apprehensions about a public wedding seemed valid as the event unfolded with unexpected twists. However, the reaction from the townspeople took everyone by surprise. Initially shocked, the community soon showed overwhelming support and admiration for the couple's unconventional love story, one that celebrated inner beauty and resilience over outward appearances. To Elias's amazement, the townspeople stood up, applauding vigorously, in a powerful display of support and acceptance. The air was filled with the sounds of their cheers, welcoming Gertrude into their community with open arms, despite her unconventional appearance. This moment of unity and solidarity marked a significant turning point, underscoring the community's capacity for acceptance and the transformative power of love and self-acceptance. From the moment Gertrude arrived, she was warmly welcomed and integrated into the community, with her presence being a source of joy and celebration for everyone. This inclusive spirit touched even Father Marcus, who initially harbored doubts about Gertrude, suspecting she might be under the influence of malevolent forces. The overwhelming acceptance and love shown by the townsfolk, however, profoundly changed his perspective. Father Marcus had been genuinely concerned that Gertrude was afflicted by dark spirits, but the community's embrace demonstrated to him how mistaken he was. 
He began to observe the genuine kindness and sincerity emanating from Gertrude, which dispelled any lingering suspicions he had about her character. With the community's unwavering support, the once hesitant priest moved forward to officiate the wedding. Father Marcus, now fully supportive and with a change of heart, offered his blessings with genuine emotion. Elias and Gertrude, standing before their friends and family, exchanged vows in an atmosphere filled with love and acceptance. This moment, symbolizing the union of the couple, was etched into the memory of the town as a testament to the power of community and understanding. It was a celebration that would be recounted for generations, highlighting the beauty of embracing differences and the strength found in acceptance. This story serves as a beautiful reminder of the importance of welcoming those who may initially seem strange or different. It's a testament to how a community's love and acceptance can transform doubts and fears into a celebration of unity and diversity. We're curious to hear your thoughts on the significance of embracing diversity and the impact it can have on individuals and communities alike. Please, feel free to share your experiences and reflections in the comments below. Thank you for engaging with this heartwarming tale. After watching this story, how do you feel? Then there is an another story about a funeral. Let's continue. On an overwhelmingly grim day, Tristan was engulfed in sorrow as he conducted the funeral of his beloved daughter. As he bid his final farewells and watched her coffin descend into the earth, a profound sense of despair washed over him. That evening, driven by an inexplicable urge, he decided to view the footage from a camera placed inside the coffin. To his horror, what he witnessed was beyond comprehension. The day Layla was laid to rest, it felt as though nature itself mourned the loss of such a vibrant and beautiful young life. The sun hung low, a dull glow in a cloudless sky, casting an eerie light over the mournful gathering. The air at the cemetery was heavy with sorrow, a tangible manifestation of the collective grief. Tristan, her adoptive father, stood solemnly beside the diminutive coffin, its lid open to allow him one last glimpse of his daughter. Observing her serene and beautiful visage, he was overwhelmed by memories of her once lively and spirited presence, now cruelly silenced by a tragic accident. As he tenderly stroked Layla's hair, reminiscing about how she delighted in his affectionate gesture, a wave of anguish consumed him, causing him to collapse to his knees. Amy, his wife, rushed to comfort him, enveloping him in a compassionate embrace as he poured out his heart, pleading for Layla's forgiveness for his perceived failures. The gathered mourners bore witness to the depth of the couple's grief, offering support and solace. Eventually, Tristan regained some semblance of composure and took a final look at his daughter. Layla was to be buried with her cherished doll, Loy, her hands clasping it tightly. With a heavy heart, Tristan withdrew, hand in hand with Amy, as the coffin was securely fastened and gently lowered into the grave. As the other attendees departed, seeking refuge from the oppressive atmosphere, Amy too left, leaving Tristan alone with his thoughts. Seated on the freshly cut grass, Tristan reflected on how Layla had profoundly transformed his life. Before her arrival, he had epitomized the carefree, thrill-seeking lifestyle, indulging in every conceivable pleasure and luxury, courtesy of his substantial inheritance from his billionaire parents. Clubs, hotels, restaurants, and exotic travel were staples of his existence, a testament to his pursuit of perpetual enjoyment. However, Layla's presence introduced him to a depth of joy and purpose he had never imagined, reshaping his world in the most extraordinary way, Tristan had accumulated such a vast wealth that the concept of working for his livelihood seemed entirely foreign to him. Living a life of extravagance alongside his best friend, Zach, Tristan was generous to a fault, often lavishing money on those around him. This generosity ensured he was never short of companions, though many were more attracted to his wealth than his friendship. His life took an unexpected turn when Zach, his closest confidant, decided to settle down with his pregnant fiancée, embarking on a new chapter of life that Tristan found difficult to accept. Despite his reservations, Tristan wished Zach well and plunged even deeper into his opulent lifestyle. The trajectory of Tristan's life altered dramatically three years later when he encountered Amy. Their connection was instantaneous and profound, with Amy mirroring Tristan's zest for life, love for elaborate parties, penchant for traveling to exotic locales, and indulgence in lavish shopping escapades. Their wedding was a spectacle of luxury, talked about across various media platforms, marking the zenith of happiness for both Tristan and Amy. As a married couple, 
they continued their globe-trotting adventures and high society engagements, seemingly unaltered by their marital status. However, tragedy struck when Tristan received devastating news about Zack and his wife's fatal accident, leaving their daughter, Layla, an orphan. As Layla's godfather and with no other family to care for her, Tristan felt a profound responsibility to adopt Layla. Discussing it with Amy, who agreed without hesitation, Tristan realized that his life was about to change fundamentally. The decision to adopt Layla made him reassess his priorities, recognizing the need to model a life of responsibility and stability for his new daughter. The transition, however, was fraught with challenges. Layla was deeply traumatized by the loss of her parents, manifesting in nightly terrors and a refusal to engage with the world around her. Tristan found himself in uncharted territory, struggling to connect with Layla and provide the support she desperately needed. Amy, too, seemed unable to adapt to their changed circumstances, often absent when her support was most needed. About six months after the tragedy, Layla's condition worsened, leading to a severe illness that required hospitalization. Tristan was confronted with the stark reality of his new role as a parent, grappling with the complexities of caring for a grieving child while navigating his own profound sense of loss and responsibility. The journey ahead promised to be difficult, but it was one that Tristan was determined to undertake, driven by love and a newfound sense of purpose. After a month of unwavering dedication, Tristan was firmly committed to doing everything within his power to ensure Layla's swift and thorough recovery. He enlisted the expertise of top medical professionals and went a step further by hiring a specialized child therapist to aid in her mental and emotional healing. When Layla began to show signs of improvement, her first smile directed at Tristan since her hospitalization and her willingness to hold his hand on the journey home marked significant milestones in her recovery. Throughout her hospital stay, Tristan was a constant presence, visiting daily and staying by her side for as long as hospital protocol allowed. His unwavering support played a pivotal role in making Layla feel secure and cherished for the first time since the devastating loss of her parents. This newfound sense of security enabled Layla to open up, resume her dietary habits, and return to school. On the anniversary of the tragic accident that claimed the lives of Zack and his wife, Tristan decided to commemorate the day by treating Layla to something special. He surprised her with a high-tech robotic doll equipped with a camera in its right eye, capable of recording its surroundings and storing the footage on a cloud accessible via his smartphone. Layla was instantly enamored with the doll. In a touching gesture, Tristan crafted a dress for the doll using pieces of clothing that had belonged to Zack and his wife, telling Layla that, with the doll by her side, she would always be accompanied by the loving presence of her parents. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Layla affectionately named the doll Loy. With a newfound sense of purpose and less inclination towards his former lifestyle of constant partying, Tristan explored new avenues for personal and professional growth. He ventured into the real estate sector, aiming to expand his late father's legacy through strategic investments. This shift in focus was, in part, motivated by his desire to provide a stable and nurturing environment for Layla. However, this change did not sit well with Amy, who longed for their old life of travel, nightlife, and unbridled fun. She even proposed hiring a nanny for Layla, suggesting they could then resume their carefree lifestyle. Tristan found the idea absurd, recognizing the importance of embracing their responsibilities as adults and prioritizing Layla's well-being above all else. Despite Amy's insistence on revisiting their past lifestyle, Tristan encouraged her to find fulfillment in a career, believing it would divert her attention from frivolous spending. As time went on, Tristan's dedication to being an exemplary father figure for Layla only intensified. His appreciation for Amy grew when he noticed her efforts to connect with and care for Layla, deepening his love for her. Their family life was filled with happiness and simplicity, a serene period that was abruptly shattered by an unforeseen tragedy. While Tristan was occupied with his professional duties, little did he know that their lives were about to be dramatically altered, Tristan had been on the verge of finalizing a purchase of a desirable piece of real estate when his world came crashing down with a devastating phone call from Amy. The news that his beloved daughter, Leah, had been involved in a tragic accident sent him into a state of panic. Without a second thought, Tristan raced to the hospital, his mind a whirlwind of prayers to every deity he could think of, begging for his little girl's safety. Unfortunately, the grim reality awaited him at the hospital, Leah had already passed away by the time he arrived. 
That night, Tristan's grief knew no bounds. He sobbed to the heavens, his cries so intense that his voice turned hoarse. He mourned until his body could produce no more tears, tormenting himself with guilt for not protecting her better and preventing the tragedy. According to Amy, who had witnessed the accident, it occurred at home. Leah had been chasing after her ball, which had rolled onto the street, oblivious to the dangers that awaited her. She didn't notice the car that struck her, and now, she lived only in Tristan's memories. Overwhelmed with sorrow, Tristan found himself sitting beside Lee's gravestone, staring blankly into the sky as dusk approached. Time seemed irrelevant to him in his state of despair, unable to muster the strength to leave. He was consumed by self-blame, regretting his absence due to the property inspection and questioning his decision to ever buy Leah the ball that ultimately led to her demise. He repeatedly apologized to Leah, and then to Zack and his wife, feeling like he had let down the entire family. While darkness enveloped the cemetery, Tristan checked his phone for the time. In a moment of longing, he decided to revisit Lee's final moments through a video stored in the cloud. The footage showed Leah lying in state during her funeral, with mourners paying their respects. However, when Amy approached the coffin, Tristan felt an inexplicable jolt. Amy's whispered words to Leah, you should have never come here. It serves you right, were bewildering and out of place. Tristan noticed a stark difference in Amy's demeanor, her earlier sorrow seemed replaced by a chilling calmness and a faint smile. Trembling with shock, Tristan revisited the video from the day of the accident, hoping to find some clarity. Tears filled his eyes again, but this time for a different reason. Contrary to what he had been told, Leah hadn't been playing with her ball that day. Instead, she had been enjoying a tea party with her dolls on the porch, a safe distance from the street. This revelation plunged Tristan into a deeper confusion and sorrow, as he struggled to reconcile this new information with the tragic loss of his daughter. As he observed intently, Tristan witnessed a scene that would forever change his perspective. Amy, with a ball clutched in her grasp, stealthily approached from behind. His heart skipped a beat as he watched, through the lens of disbelief, his wife impulsively hurled the ball into the bustling street. Following this, Amy gently tapped Leah on the shoulder, coaxing her with a radiant smile to retrieve the ball. Oblivious to the lurking danger, the cheerful little girl, Leah, sprang to her feet and dashed towards the road. With caution, she scanned her surroundings, left, then right, and left again, before bravely crossing the street. After successfully retrieving the ball, she meticulously ensured it was safe before making her way back, returning the ball to Amy. Just as Leah was about to rejoin her imaginary tea party, the scene took a harrowing turn. The video unexpectedly glitched, distorting the image as the sound of an accelerating engine overpowered the audio. In a heart-stopping moment, the doll was forcefully torn from Lee's grasp. The screen then succumbed to darkness, leaving Tristan in a state of shock and disbelief. For what felt like an eternity, Tristan sat immobilized, his mind a void of confusion. The reality he had been led to believe was shattered, Lee's tragic encounter with the car was not a mere accident but a deliberate act. The crucial detail that the doll harbored a camera had been kept a secret from Amy, and thus, she was oblivious to its capability to record her actions. With a newfound resolve, Tristan leaped into action. He dashed to his car and navigated through the streets with urgency, bound for the police station. Amy's previous account of the incident, claiming ignorance of Lee's presence on the road until it was too late, now seemed sinister. The thought of Amy inflicting harm on such an innocent soul was beyond comprehension. Upon arriving at the police station, Tristan wasted no time in presenting the damning video evidence to the authorities. The investigation that ensued was swift. The police retrieved additional footage from a dashcam and nearby CCTV cameras, which corroborated the grim reality, Amy was indeed responsible for Lee's demise. She was apprehended immediately, her protests and threats of retribution echoing hollowly as she was escorted to the station. Throughout her tumultuous arrival and resistance at the station, Amy vehemently denied her involvement. However, when confronted with the irrefutable evidence captured by the doll's camera, her facade crumbled momentarily before she defiantly dismissed the footage as fabricated. She suggested that the video could have been manipulated by anyone with access to the cloud, aiming to frame her. 
Nevertheless, her claims were quickly dismantled as the inspector presented the incontrovertible dashcam and CCTV footage, leaving her defenseless against the weight of her actions. Upon the realization that her deceit was uncovered, she couldn't hold back genuine tears anymore. Dropping to her knees, her hands tightly clasped together, she begged for mercy with a desperation that shook her core. She poured out her heart, claiming that the escalation of events was never her intention. Her frustration stemmed from the radical transformation in Tristan ever since Layla entered their lives. The man she once fell deeply in love with had become a stranger to her, one who had abandoned their carefree lifestyle of partying and globetrotting for a more settled existence. Tristan's newfound desire to lead a responsible life, focusing on work and insisting she do the same, was something she found unbearable. Layla's presence demanded all of Tristan's time and attention, a change that she resented deeply. She regretted the day she agreed to welcome Layla into their home, pinpointing it as the moment she felt she lost her husband. Her bitterness reached its peak when she stumbled upon Tristan's will, revealing his decision to bequeath half of his estate to Layla. Amy's disdain was palpable, despite being entitled to the other half, she believed she deserved it all. In her eyes, Layla was an unwelcome intruder who threatened the luxurious life she married Tristan for. Tristan, upon hearing her confession, felt a profound sense of betrayal. The realization that the woman he loved and trusted was motivated by greed from the start left him reeling. He resolved to support the legal proceedings to ensure Amy faced the consequences of her actions. After a painstaking series of trials, Amy was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. The news of her betrayal spread rapidly, becoming a focal point of discussion within the shocked community. Struggling to cope with the aftermath, Tristan found himself paralyzed by the weight of the tragedy. He sought solace in creating a lasting tribute to Layla's memory by establishing an orphanage. This endeavor became a channel for his grief, allowing him to provide care and a safe haven for children like Layla. It was through this act of kindness and remembrance that he began to find a semblance of peace and purpose. The story of Tristan's journey from despair to finding a way to honor Layla's memory is both heart-wrenching and inspiring. His decision to build an orphanage not only served as a monument to a lost loved one but also transformed his grief into a force for good. What are your thoughts on Tristan's path to healing through giving back to the community? Share your insights in the comments below. That's all about our story, if you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next story.